Welcome to Math Studio Talk. The purpose of these videos is to help you interpret what students should be able to do and understand to meet the demands of Common Core Math. We will demonstrate various games, activities, and models that can be used within the structure of a formal lesson plan to develop flexible thinking and deep understanding. And of course, we'll show you the math. Hi, I'm Nick Timpone, and in this video I'll be dealing with the operations and algebraic thinking domain for second grade, which builds from the work done in the OA domain in first grade. As you can see, students will extend their understanding of addition and subtraction to solve one and two step word problems, and they will work with arrays to represent repeated addition. Let's look at standard OA1. In first grade, students solve word problems using addition and subtraction within 20. Second graders work on one step and two step problems and within 100. We will look at the various types of problems second graders are expected to solve. This table very clearly shows the difference between one step and two step problems. A one step problem requires only one computation, while two step problems require two computations. Students' first experiences with two-step problems should be with single-digit add-ends like these. This is so the focus can be on creating the equations. Let's take a look at this word problem. Katie has eight U.S. stamps and six stamps from Mexico. Her dad gave her nine stamps from Canada. How many stamps does Katie have now? We want the students to engage with the word problem and then try and draw a model that will enable them to write the equation and solve the problem. So let's start with labeling. What kind of stamps do we have first? We have U.S. stamps. How many do we have? We have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Back into the problem. And what do we have next? We have stamps from Mexico. We have six of them. Let's represent that with an M for Mexico and our six stamps. And back into the problem, her dad gave her nine stamps from Canada. Let's label that with a C for Canada. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now right away you can see that this is a two-step problem. We have to add the U.S. and the Mexico, get that total, and then add it to Canada. So at this point, the student can start writing the equation. Count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, equals, that's what we're trying to find out. Now, let's just look at some properties of numbers and operations that we can use to solve this. This is not an easy thing to do in your head without utilizing some of the thinking strategies that we talked about before. So let's start with decomposing this 6 into a 2 and a 4. So now we have 8 plus 2 plus 4 plus 9 equals question mark. Okay, so that helps because now we have a 10. Now we have 10 plus 4 plus 9 equals question mark. Oh great, I can do that 14 really easily. 14 plus 9 equals question mark. Now we might get a little bit stuck. 14 plus 9. But let's use one of the thinking strategies we talked about. 14 plus 9 is the same as 14 plus 10 minus 1 equals 24 minus 1, which is 23. Now on to standard OA2. Students learn many strategies involving place value and properties of numbers to minimize the need for memorizing addition and subtraction facts within 20. In second grade, students should become fluent with this skill. To be fluent means to be accurate, efficient, and flexible. Fluency is built with significant practice adding and subtraction with oral drills, sprints, and other activities. Let's look at some of the mental math strategies students can use for addition and subtraction within 20. Let's start with the associative property. 2 plus 6 
plus 4 can be rearranged to become 6 plus 4 plus 2. This is a number bond that the students have learned already, so this quickly becomes recognized as 10 plus 2 equals 12. The associative property allows students to rearrange the numbers so the addition problems become easier. Another strategy is doubles. Students generally learn their doubles pretty quick. 2 plus 2, 4 plus 4, 8 plus 8. So let's look at 8 plus 9. They know they're 8 doubles. 8 plus 8. So if 8 plus 8 is 16, and 9 is one more than 8, then 8 plus 8 plus 1 is 17. How about making tens? That's something they've gotten very used to from kindergarten up to second grade. So let's use making tens as a strategy. 8 plus 9 equals 8. I'm going to decompose this 9 into a 2 and 7. Becomes 10 plus 7 becomes 17. Cool, all right? How about adding 10s? The students learned how to add their 10s, so this strategy is really easy for them. Watch this. 8 plus 9 equals 8 plus 10, but we won't only want to add 9, so it's 10 minus 1. Notice that 10 minus 1 is equivalent to 9, so we're adding the same thing. This becomes 18 minus 1 equals 17. Another cool one, compensation. Let's look at 8 plus 9 again. And by compensation, we can write this as 7 plus 10. Compensation means we're taking from one and giving to another. Look, we took one from the 8 and made it 7, and we compensated for that by adding 1 to the 9 to make 10. So these are equivalent, and it equals 17. Subtraction is traditionally thought to be harder than addition, but when students understand the unique relationship between addition and subtraction, subtraction within 20 becomes quite easy for them. Subtraction is defined as finding missing add-ends. 10 minus 8 is the number that makes 10 when added to 8. Let's look at two ways students can subtract 17 minus 9. This strategy is called going back through 10, because what we're going to do is we're going to decompose this 9 into a 7 and a 2, which allows us to go back through 10. 17 minus 7 minus 2. We change the 9 to a 7 and 2, and this allows us to make a 10. This equals 10 minus 2 equals 8. A nice strategy for doing a difficult subtraction problem. The second strategy is called adding up. Remember, the definition of subtraction in this case is what number is added to 9 to get to 17. Let's start with 9 plus 1 to get to 10. 10 is a good landing point when you're counting up. Now, I have to get to 17. I'm at 10. 10 plus 7 equals 17. Students know that fact. So now they look at this and say, OK, so I counted up 1, and I counted up 7. One plus 7 equals 8. 17 minus 9 is 8. Given enough time and practice with concrete work, with addition and subtraction within 20, students will develop many of these thinking strategies on their own, assimilate them, and begin to use them in more abstract situations and without the need for concrete objects. That is when they will become fluent with addition and subtraction within 20. And now on to standard 3. An even number is defined as a number that can be decomposed, taken apart, into two equal add-ends. 8 equals 4 plus 4, so 8 is even. So writing the equation, 8 equals 4 plus 4. That's why 8 is even. The fact that even numbers end with 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8 is a pattern. It's not a definition. A number is even if you can make two equal add-ends with nothing left over. Let's look at what that looks like with counters. 
If you give students a set of even number counters and a set of odd number counters and have them match them up and see what happens. One to one correspondence. One, 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 one. Good. Now do this one. One to one, one to one, one to one, one to one, one to. Then the discussion you want to have with the students is how do I know which number is even? How do I know which number is odd? The language you want to hear them say is in this group, there's three and three, and that's six, and there's none left over. In this group, I have three in this column, I have four in this column, there's one left over, so it's not even. That's the language you want students to use. Another way that they can see even numbers is with a rectangular grid. And notice that, you know, they're familiar with these models, and we're going to use these all the way through the grades. This looks like in the same shape as a tens frame. It's going to look like the area model that they'll use with fractions in fourth grade. So it has a lot of uses, and it'll be coming up to them over and over again through the grades. But this represents for plus 4 equals 8 with no leftovers, OK? If they can't deal with a rectangular grid, make an array. And there is a difference between a rectangular grid and an array. This is a rectangular grid. An array is simply an arrangement of shapes in an organized pattern. It's an important distinction because some students do have trouble drawing rectangular grids in, in this grade, and it's OK for them to go to arrays. So 1, 2, 3, 4, match it up 1 to 1, 1 two, three, four. They have two equal groups with no leftovers. Therefore, it's an even number. That's what you want to use to know if students understand if a number is even or odd, if they can say that language. And now on to the final standard in this domain, operations and algebraic thinking for second grade. This is a nice extension from the previous standard, and it introduces the students to the idea of repeated addition, which is the foundation for the multiplication work they will do in grade three. Again, we want to start with concrete objects. So ask the students to arrange four groups of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One. Two, three, one, two, three. And then ask them to write the addition equation that goes with this model. And they should write three plus three plus three plus three. And then ask them what it equals. And they're going to have to go count it most likely. So that's OK. We want them counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. And always moving from concrete to pictorial. So from here, we'll go back to the arrays. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. One, two, three. And this also represents the addition sentence 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 equals 12. That's all you're interested in doing this in this standard. We're not relating it to multiplication. We're not saying this is 3 times 4. We're just building the arrays and representing the equation with the models. Go back and forth with this. Give the students the array and have them write the equation. Give them the equation and have them write the array. Although the standards are organized as discrete items, they are not always intended to be taught that way. Many standards are closely related, and you will be teaching more than one at a time in your classroom. For example, students will be discovering mental strategies for adding and subtracting within 100 while they are solving the types of word problems described in a different standard. In this way, you are teaching through problem solving instead of teaching problem solving as a separate skill. Thanks for watching this math studio talk. We hope that you enjoyed it, found it meaningful, and learned a thing or two to take back to your classroom.